In yesterday's guide, we built out a Macbeth counter, and this is in answer to a upcase code interview question or when they're code exercises, where you create, a, or you take in an XML file and then you create a hash that generates all of the names of each one of the characters in the Macbeth play and the name of the speaker is the key and then the value is going to be all of the lines that they had in that play so this is going to be each one of the lines so lady Macbeth had 266 uh, 265 lines in the play and this is what gets returned and because of that structure you're also able to do things such as call the name of the person using bracket syntax and see how many lines they had so this is something that worked and what we're going to do is we're going to refactor it now if some parts of what you see right here so say you didn't go through that exercise or you didn't watch that solution if some parts of what you see here are fuzzy or make no sense to you whatsoever i definitely recommend for you to watch that video and go through that solution first because i'm not going to be spending the same amount of time talking about this process so talking about how you can parse through a XML file and how you can convert it to a hash and then perform each one of those items. This is not going, uh, I, this one is not going to be like that. The goal of this guide instead, if you read the exercise description, is to convert this process into a functional process. So this is using a iterative approach, which means that we take a very step-by-step -step approach. We create a empty hash with a structure where the key is going to be the name and then on the right hand side it's going to be the value and it's going to start at zero and then we take an iterative approach going through each line until we have counted up all the lines that are there. This is fine but I did want to show you a little bit different way of doing it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create a method that's going to abstract away some of these processes. So I'm going to say unwrap XML and it's going to take in data as the argument. And I'm inside of this, I'm actually going to create an enumerator. So I'm going to say enumerator.new and then pass in y as the block variable. Now, if you've never worked with the enumerator class or module, what, what this is going to allow us to do is to call enumerated or uh, enumerable methods on top of this. So when we unwrap the XML, we're going to do more than simply be able to iterate through it. We're actually going to be able to call some very helpful methods such as group by and transform values to be able to take what we have and, and kind of just make it so it reads better and also so that it's more scalable. So right now, this method, this Macbeth counter, this would only be able to be used to count and to work with a XML file with the structure of the one we're working with, which is fine in certain instances, but I usually like to think, what could I do in case I need to use this for other pieces of data? So say we have another XML file that we need to parse and we need to sum up for say another play but their xml items and their tags are different well we'd have to essentially copy and paste all of this and then just change up the parsing process and then you're gonna have a lot of duplicate data and that would not be something you want to do so instead what we're going to do is we're going to create a method here called unwrap xml that is going to do the hard part of that for us. So we're going to take certain parts from what we had before, so such as this hash from XML. So we're going to be able to take this, and inside of here, I'm going to paste this in. And so we're going to say hash from XML, but now this is just going to take the data by itself. So we're passing in the argument into this from XML 
uh, argument or method right here. And now we can, for the most part, copy those other things. So here we can get rid of some of it, but we're going to bring it over. So if I get rid of hash, and the reason I can get rid of hash is because I'm going. that's what we're going to be using. That's what we passed down there on line 23. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this. And now we can paste it down here, indent it, and then put it just like this. Now, if that was kind of weird, definitely recommend looking at the old file so you can compare it. So far, we've done nothing except create a new method, and then we're wrapping this hash inside of the enumerator class so that we can call some of our more functional methods on it. That uh, me removing that hash variable is just because I think it reads better and it's a lot shorter. So now that we have that, this is going to do everything that we could do before, but now it's inside of this unwrap XML call. And that is not everything we have to do inside of it though because now that we have a numerator we have some other cool things that we can do so uh, everything with the parsing is going to stay the same because nothing's changed on the xml file structure we have a play and an act we have a scene we have a speech we still need to go through all of those but there are some nice little refactors we can do first i last time i was grabbing the value and that's really not needed because if you notice at no point are we actually using the values. So with each, if you only pass in one block variable, then you'll have access to that, and it's going to be, for a hash, it's going to be the key. So we're still getting the same data. We're just not having a wasted calls there. So now, instead of a counter hash, we're going to do something a little bit different. Because if you notice, we're, in fact, let me actually get rid of this entirely. And so now, instead of this counter hash, I'm going to say Y and then use the shovel operator. And so the reason we can do this is because I wrap this in an enumerator, we have access to this Y block variable here, and we're going to be piping in data into Y. So what we want to return is an enumerable object and that's what we're doing so y is going to be what gets returned and we're going to be piping in each one of these items so now instead of a counter hash we're going to just say k3 speaker and then right after this we're going to say comma so this is going to grab the speaker for us this is going to be the first element and then the next one, we're not going to be iterating over. We're going to worry about doing that later. So the next element in the array is going to be an array. And it's going to be K3, line, and then count. And then we're going to close off the bracket. So notice the kind of the difference we have right here. So what we're doing now is we're saying that inside of that enumerator, instead of doing what we we're doing before where we're uh, yeah, incrementing the value by however many lines are in, now what we're doing when we're unwrapping the XML, we're simply returning an array into the enumerable object and it's going to contain two items. It's going to contain the K3 speaker. So in other words, it's just going to contain the speaker's name as the first element. Then it's going to contain the count as the second element. So this is going to kind of clean up what we're actually dealing with here. So let me come down. Let's see at kind of at what stage we're at right now, because this was a lot of code to write. And so we don't have what we need yet, but I do want to see what gets returned. So now let me come down to line 21 and run the Macbeth counter and see what we have. And as you can see right now, that worked. It worked in the sense that this returned an enumerator. So this returned an enumerator object. And because of that, we're able to use enumer enumerator methods on it. And this is going to be the cool part. I know that 
some of this may seem a little bit tedious and you may really not seem see a huge point to it but hopefully by the time i've shown you how the new counter works you can see how this works and how it becomes much more readable so i'm going to say unwrap xml and then i want to call some methods on this and the first one I mean, so i'm going to do a dot technically i could put this all on one line but whenever you're using functional programming the convention is to do a dot then indent by two and then call the next method on it so in this case we are going to use the group by method which takes a block and here what we want to do is pass in speaker as a block variable and then an underscore now why do we need an underscore well because group by takes in two block arguments you need to supply two block arguments and there are methods in ruby that inside of the block they're going to take two block arguments and there's many times where you don't need both of them well whenever that's the case the common convention the best practice is to pass it in as an underscore so that is a signal to yourself in the future and also to any other developers looking at your code that this argument's there but you're not using it at all so we're not going to call an underscore anywhere here we're only going to call the first element which is the speaker and we're just going to return that so what is this doing well group by is a very helpful method and it can work on the enumerator object and it's going to group all of the items by that first element if you come down to line 15 you can see the first element is the speaker so this is going this is essentially saying that we want to in our array right or in our hash here we want to group each one of these items by the speaker name so before what we were doing is we had our hash and inside of our hash we simply said i want you to keep on adding elements i want you to count up the lines and then just add them using that bracket syntax and that's how we we're able to do our group by but now what we're doing with more of a functional approach we're saying we want you to group by the speaker the, so maybe you can see this is part of the reason why i wanted to go through this is say you are a new developer coming to this and you see code like this this is going to be much easier to read you want because you can say okay what is this method doing well first it goes out and it gets xml data then it unwraps it then it groups it by speaker and next we're going to do the last step on this which is it's going to transform values so make sure you put a dot at the end of that and i'm going to say transform values this is a method provided once again from active support so if you're not using active support this won't work but we're going to say value here so this is the value of our enumerator and so it's going to say value and then value map we want to grab the last item so i'm going to use the uh, the ampersand syntax passed in passed uh, pass in last so this is going to grab the last item and then we're going to inject and just add that together so if you're familiar with inject you know that that simply is going to add the items up so first let's test it out let's make sure it's working and then we'll give one final walkthrough so if i run this line 23 it looks like this is working perfectly it's working just like before and if i run this so let's run the actual rspec test so rspec march 21st so if i run these tests they're both passing so we're getting the exact same behavior as before and you may think that really was a ton of work to get the exact same behavior and yeah you're right i mean this was definitely a non-trivial exercise but i think it's worth it and let me kind of show you what my rationale is on it well if you come down to this counter here technically you could change this name to be something like play counter imagine that you were working with xml data like this all day long and you constantly were needing to summarize items and some of the xml data was structured the same sometimes it was structured very very differently 
Well, you'd want to have a method that could go through and perform that summary no matter how the XML data is structured. Because you, if you remember back to what we had before, so if you look at what we had, and uh, actually this is on the master branch, so it doesn't have the solution on there. But uh, if you look back at what we had before, you would have had to have written all of this code every single time and then customize it and then perform all of those uh, sums and do all of that. that. That definitely would not be the most intuitive approach. It would be very time consuming and most likely very buggy. And so that's not a good idea. But when you can take something like a process that you know you're going to have to go through every single time and you can abstract part of that out, that can save you a lot of time and it can lead to much less buggy code and allows you to focus on the things that should be focused on. So imagine that you did have a application that constantly needed to perform that kind of data manipulation where you took in an XML file and you needed to create a summed version of it. Well, this Macbeth counter, which you would probably rename, can now be used to sum up and summarize all of that data anytime, no matter what the structure is. And so then all you have to do is on a structure by structure basis, then you just have to build out a method that goes and it knows which values need to be parsed. And eventually you could even, if it's something you do a lot, you could even refactor it even beyond this. So you could go and pass in a way of parsing this and say, these are the levels and this is how I want you to iterate over it and then return that updated enumerator. But this is something that would save you a ton of time because now you don't have to worry about counting and grouping items anymore. This method does it for you. You should be able to, if it's built properly, just write it and then never have to touch it again. You should just be able to call it and then here you can, anytime you get a new XML file that has a different structure, now you can go through it and customize it on that basis, but you don't have to worry about summing them up, grouping them, or doing anything like that. So. Scalability is definitely an important thing, but readability to me is just as important because that old method was really convoluted. What we had there yesterday was, uh, you know, it definitely was not the easiest to read. If I came back to that code a month from now, it would take me some time to figure out exactly what's going on. But inside of this method, I can instantly see what we're doing. I can say, okay, we're grabbing XML data, then we're unwrapping it, then we're grouping it by speaker, and then we're transforming the values so that we're grabbing the last one and we're adding it together, we're summing it up. To me, that's much more intuitive, and if I get asked to do a new feature on top of it, it's going to be much more straightforward than if I was trying to go through that old method and trying to put patches on top of that. So that, that's part of the reason why I wanted to show you both approaches. And I also wanted to give you a good introduction to functional programming, and this is a functional way of going about it. Notice how... This isn't iterative. We're not doing things such as creating a data structure and then passing items into it one step at a time. You can see here, this is just a series of method calls and they're much more descriptive and they just are processes that occur one after the other. And so I think this is a really good example if you look at this compared with yesterday on the difference between iterative and functional programming.